today I'd like to tie for you a Magog smelt. And the hook I have in the vise is a four extra long streamer hook. This is a size six. And the thread I'm going to use is black. We're going to start the thread right at the eye. And we're going to take the thread back oh, about one and a half eye lengths. And we're going to trim that off right there. This is where we're going to start our body. Our body is going to be silver tinsel. And because I'm going to be covering the shank back and forward, I am going to use a number 12 silver tinsel. This is probably a quarter inch. And I'm going to place the tag in from the opposite side towards me. And I'm just going to catch a little bit of it and tie that down and the silver would be on top and now I'm going to start wrapping it then I'm going to overlap it slightly And I'm going all the way to the back and I'm coming forward once again. And I'm overlapping this by half. Keep it tight. And once in a while grab the hook and pull that and you could feel that tightening even more and after three or four reps pull it and give it that pull and that pulls it right in Take it all the way up, hold that tight, and tie it in, making these tight wraps before you go and let go. And I'm going to trim away the excess, leave just a little tag there, and then I'm going to wrap that down just to ensure that I have a good tight seal good tight tie down on there you know at this point you can take some head cement and coat that if you would like with a thin layer of head cement you can even use your UV cure and that's what I'm going to do and I'm just gonna put a thin layer on there then I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to spread that out and work it all the way around. And if you give it just a few seconds, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the light. And just a couple of seconds all the way around is all it needs. And now we're going to start with the body. And the first wing of the body is white bucktail. Then we're going to size them up. We want them to be one and a half the length of the shank. 
and I'm going to remove the excess get rid of any loose ones after that and then I'm going to tie them in and I'm just going to give them a quick secure and the next material is going to be yellow bucktail you don't want to overdo it less is more and with those I'm just going to even them out in the same way and these all look, all look pretty good and we want them to be the same length as the white ones and we're going to tie them in you want to tie it tight but you don't want to overdo it on the wraps and now the third wing is going to be purple bucktail and we're going to take the same amount as the first two once again the tips don't have to be perfect and we're going to make that wing just as long as the yellow maybe slightly longer and I'm going to remove the excess before I tie it down and I'm going to tie that down and I'm holding them a bit at a 45 degree angle and I got to build up there on the tip just a little bit got a little bit of a step from all of that deer hair there we go it's building up nicely now when you're tying deer hair if it tends to flare a lot this isn't real bad but it's still flaring a bit what you do is make looser wraps towards the back and that will hold it down if you pull it tight it's going to flare and now for the final layer of wing I'm going to take peacock hurl and I'm going to take six of those and we're going to lay them on top and we want them just to be the length of the purple bucktail and we tie them in loose towards the top because we don't want to spin that deer hair and I'm going to remove the excess and now we're going to wrap the head in good cover a uh, peacock hurl pretty good and don't worry if you don't get every spot because we got more wrapping to do and now I'm going to take a red schloppin feather and I'm going to start out with it on the far side and make that first wrap and it will pull it right underneath and now because I have a rotary vise I'm going to turn it over and clip the excess using the rotary vise you can turn it over and just hold it in place right on the bottom and I'm going to wrap that in so I don't see any of the red on the and now for the final material we should be using a barred teal flank which is black and white but what I'm going to use since I don't have any is I have a really thin stemmed guinea feather here and I'm going to use that for my hackle I'm going to tie that in with the concave side toward the hook shank and I'm going to start cleaning up the head as I go either now or after I wrap it, it really doesn't make a difference and I'm going to get my hackle plier catch it with my hackle plier and pull them all to the one side and I'm going to wrap it
and only a wrap or two is going to be necessary. And one wrap was all. Release my hackle pliers and tie it down. And I'm going to get rid of the excess. And I'm going to hold all of the hackle fibers back. Clean up that little bit on the front. And I'm going to make sure my threads cover the head completely. I'm holding the hackle down. And I'm going to wrap the head all the way up to position where I wrapped it on the deer hair. And then I'm going to come forward quickly and give it a whip finish. Tighten that up. And I'm going to take my bodkin and I'm going to pull that throat out. And I'm going to remove a couple of those barbels. And now for the eyes, I'm going to use 3D stick-on eyes. And I'm going to use my bodkin to take them off the cardboard, and I'm going to use the bodkin to place them. And I'm going to put them right on the head. And take the second. And I'm going to take my Loon UV fly finish. And I'm going to put a drop right between the eyes on top. And I'm going to spread that out just a bit. And I'm going to put a drop right between the eyes on the bottom. And I got to clear the eye out. And I'm going to give it a quick shot. Just to freeze them. And now I'm going to take my UV finish and coat the entire eye. The thin layer. Go on the eye. Over it. And go right around with it. And I'm going to let that settle, rotate it a little bit for it to settle. And I'm going to take my UV light once again and give it a quick zap. And here I have my holographic tape. I'm going to hold it around it so it bounces the light around for a couple seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and that should be done. Now let me widen that out for you so you can see the fly. 
Man, here we have a Magog smelt. Hope that you learned something from this video. Hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please leave comments, questions, suggestions, and most of all, I thank you very much for watching my videos.